Hello and good morning YouTube uh, and it is truly morning you may notice some beautiful natural light flowing in from the left of frame um, and it is such an early morning that I haven't yet had my coffee so we're gonna see perhaps that'll be the main trial of this morning the main test or lesson not for you but for me whether or not I can do this before coffee. Anyway, the subject of this morning, I want to revisit elevation because my methods have evolved uh, quite a lot in every field of drawing since my first kind of series of tutorials. So be it trees or elevation or grass, just about anything, uh, it's all changed. So expect a few uh, repeat subjects, uh, but hopefully that in itself will be a lesson and I can show you kind of my thought process behind the changes. Anyway, I've blabbered on too long, let's do some drawing. So with elevation, this is my stand-in again for my drafting pencil. Usually I'd use a blue colored pencil uh, to draft shapes and layout, but this blue it's just a tad too faint for the camera, so I'm going to use this mechanical pencil. Uh, and it's going to be dark enough for your eyeballs to see. Uh, so, this is my piece of paper, and this is my strategically placed um, d d material, just to show that I'm, I'm a legit DM who uh, writes at least a two by four inch stat block for his boss monsters. Just ignore that, James and Troy. Uh, anyway, elevation, that's what we're talking about. So I'm gonna pretend this is my map. It's a downsized one. And I want a nice high area on this side. And I want a road down here. I'm not gonna draw the road today, but we'll pretend it's there road. This will be like a plateau. And then I want like a step-by-step -step climb up to this plateau from the road. So I've drawn the shape of the plateau. I'm going to choose where I want the path to begin down. I'm going to say here. Uh, I'm going to draw it. Uh, mm, uh, mm. Let's draw the levels first. So there's going to be another level here. And just the third level, smaller still here, and it follows the road. So it's just like, uh, I don't know if they teach topographical maps anywhere but my school. But anyway, I learned how to draw topical, topographical maps when I was in high school. And the, the general idea of topographical maps for anyone who's uninitiated, please excuse the truck driving by, is that uh, where there's a significant enough change in elevation, that's where a line is drawn. Not so much significant enough, but at set points, so every, say, five meters elevation change, a line will be drawn. That's what it looks like now, but truth be told, that's not what it is. We're just drawing the edges of our ledges. We're coming up with catchphrases now. Okay, so... I'm going to start with the top and this ledge edge up here is the top. It could potentially be the bottom, but I'm saying it's the top. And from our decided path, essentially I'm just going to draw the path from here down to our next level, but we need to figure out where that level is. So let's choose the height of our ledge. The ledge is going to be this high and I'm drawing this just with a kind of a, um, a lurching swipe of the wrist just to be that's kind of I don't know that's kind of my my style and you know this is an exceptionally small ledge here so this this here shall be a staircase and then this one will make bigger in fact you know what this whole ledge here, this is going to be 
the top and the bottom. So uh, this ledge, people will walk down here. This is a flat ledge that they can walk on. And reaching here, there'll be a little switch back and it'll go right to here. And I'm using that same lurching kind of wrist swipe, as I called it. Now, what I, I like to do also is branching off of these, the pathway, uh, little ledges too, which run parallel with the cliff face. So here is a miniature ledge, just like this big ledge intended for play, but it's, it's too thin unless you're like a shinobi with a, with a shimmy button. Uh, you, you can't shimmy out on there. Okay, anyway, layout. So, next step, I'm going to line these in. I'm going to start with this one. And same, same lurching, and I'm just kind of generally following my lines. And then we have um, something else to consider is before you put in that bottom ledge, throw in your some uh, debris that has fallen down the ledge and landed and come to a rest at the bottom. Uh, the reason I do that first is because you get a much more three-dimensional effect when you now put in your bottom line here. And you know, sometimes I like to break this up with a little tuft of grass or just like some dots, just so it's not such a defined line. Vary it up with thickness and with rocks and grass and dots or hatching. Uh, mm. Are we indeed in court recording? We are, that's good. Uh, okay, so steps. I'm just going to horizontal line those in. And I've decided now that it comes up an extra step here. And there's a rock at the bottom and some dots. <clears throat> this is like a, uh, this is the beginner's guide. I'm, I'm sure I'll give this more thought later. Um, speaking of thought, you may want to come up with a system that makes strictly um, uh, strictly uh, communicates the height of these cliffs, like a shorthand, that's what you want. So what I've been doing, not so much in my maps, but in my personal games, is the next step, which I should have explained first, the next step is to throw in some horizontal, just liney noise, like this kind of stuff. Now, your shorthand might be that every layer of liney noise, you can see there's kind of a continuous line through it. That could be your 10 foot marker, going back to the whole topographical map kind of concept. So this cliff here is 20 foot, 20 feet high from top to bottom. Uh, you might decide to do that or you might just randomly throw these lines in. Uh, so that was your next step is that line. Uh, you can do one line and then add some branches to it. That would give you much the same of what I've got going on here. Next line I like to throw some hatching just at random connecting the sides to the line. Uh, you could be strategic about it and do like here, where I am mm, narrowing the hatching as we get lower in elevation, and that gives an additional sense of depth. And you know what? That looks pretty good. Uh, but sometimes I like to add a few more rocky square circle kind of shapes to it. Like rhomboids, square, square circles. Did that just come out of my mouth? Uh, triangles and squares and geometric, geomorphic shapes. That there, 
that looks like a pretty good cliff. Uh, we could throw some more rubble down the bottom. <clears throat> I mentioned it in my last elevation video, the rubble at the bottom helps communicate which side is indeed the bottom. Uh, you can imagine without that rubble it would be rather confusing. You'd have to literally just tell your players this is the top, this is the bottom. Okay, we're going to pick up the pace now because uh, this is taking a long time. Um, up here, this is the top of the ledge. We're going to break it up with some grass, some dashes. That is where our path connects. Grass, uh, ledge grass, uh, dashes and stuff. Uh, this is our uh, trail down, so we're going to put some rocks lying on the trail. Here's a big one. Ooh. And then we're going to draw this in the ledge leading down the path with a little branch off onto this ledge. Another strategy for your you boys with the big pens is this top ledge. If you thicken that up, that also gives you another layer of depth, another, uh, another uh, visual element communicating depth. Uh, because it's closer to the eye, so to speak, the lines will be more defined. So I'm just going to retroactively do that. And then with your thin pen, throw it down here. We've got some rubble here. We got our ledge going down here. This is now a top. This is now the top of the ledge because uh, the slope continues down. And this is our bottom rubble step. And you know, a lot of map mapping is just training your hand to do these particular shapes efficiently. Or, you know, the first step will be skillfully, the next step after that will be efficiently. And then, oof, I don't like that, but it's done. Oh, this is a very grassy bottom, so we're gonna put lots of grass down here. And you know, I, I do usually take much more time than this. But if you're the DM, and I do this at my table, and you draw everything on a battle, uh, on a, 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 a blank mat, or in my case, a whiteboard, um, the, the fast pen strokes really does help you because your players are literally sitting there waiting for you to finish drawing. Okay, um, that's pretty cool. We're going to dash in these topographical lines. Uh, this here is one of them. This here is one of them. And we're gonna have another one here. Oh, that's confusing right now, isn't it? And then this will continue being interrupted by the path down and continue here. And you can see the effect this is going to have when we get to here, it's going to squeeze it all together. And as you who know how topical graphical works work, hard to say, much more easy to imagine. Um, when these lines get closer together, they, it, it, it marks a cliff, like a much more sheer drop than over here. This will be like a almost gentle slope, much more gentle than here. And then we had one more coming through here. And we can overlap these two for uh, a little bit more interest. And in fact, you know, keeping them evenly spaced is quite boring. I would have um, undone that. I would have done that a little differently had I taken more time. So anyway. Throwing in some hatching, opportunistic hatching. You can see where we've got little divots in our line. That's a good 
place for some hatching. Just some throwing, I said this in my last one, but throwing triangles in is just like a, a little shortcut, a little cheat code. Uh, uh, uh. Strategic scribbling is another word for it. And, and if I can do one more tip before I shut the camera off, top of your ledges, I like uh, in the case where it's rocky and not grassy. You know what, I'll talk about both. <clears throat> so let's pretend we have this here is a grassy patch. So all this is grass. Um, I'd like to add one more line of grass here. And that gives us the sense of it falling away. Um, the alternative for rocky faces is just to give it a thin secondary line like this. And I like to mix this in. We're kind of switching subjects here to rock faces. Uh, flat horizontal rock faces, but I like to mix this into my rocky shapes. Okay, I have the feeling we're going quite over time. Anyway, that is a rather all right, elevation based battle map. Um, a lot of the visual clarity comes in with the color in my maps. So if you're sticking strictly to black and white, I recommend not going so heavy on the line art because it will quickly become confusing. As I, I'd say this one is pretty confusing. Like I would skip these, these uh, rocky cracks in the horizontal rock, just leave it blank like this, and then it's clear. Players, you can walk on the blank stuff and this messy rocky stuff. That is deadly, deadly cliffs. And, uh, and also, you know, you could, uh, you could talk about light and shadow today, Ross, but you know, that's, that's a good subject for another day. Hmm. You know what, if you do have a pencil handy, <clears throat> you could just also give this a, a bunch of shading. You know, mechanical pencil, very ill suited to what I just said. So don't, don't do that. Okay, anyway, there is elevation 2.0. If you prefer the previous method, which is probably simpler and probably clearer, this one's a bit more artsy fartsy, then stick to the old one. But uh, here is a, an alternative for you all that I enjoy and thought I might share today. Uh, okay, so that is our uh, Ross's Daily Doodles for this morning. And I'll talk to you next time. Goodbye.